Welcome everyone to the tutorial section of workshop 5 wherein we would be looking into how we can use k-means for doing image compression. We're doing the tutorial on Google Colab. Uh, so the link of the Google Colab uh, and the picture would be provided to you on our website. So you can uh, download it and use it on your uh, computer and follow the tutorial as we go along. So let's start the tutorial. Uh, first, we would import, like from SK image, we would import IO. So we do this because uh, we need IO to read the image and then show the image that has been read. So we would provide it an image and on that image, we would do the image compression. And for that, it requires um, the image to be read and to be shown. That's why we would import IO. Then from sklearn.cluster, we import k-means. So uh, Python has um, k-means function already built into it, like a library built into it. So you don't have to manually code uh, for doing k-means. You don't have to manually code the k-means algorithm. You just have to import k-means and it will do everything for you. Then we import numpy as np, and then we import os. And os here is the operating system so it um, helps us uh, interact with the operating system and show us the um, images and all of that sort so let's start with the code we first take a variable org and set that to false and then we take another variable clusters and we define the clusters to be um, a list of 1 5 10 15 so here we would be uh, compressing the image uh, based on these clusters and now for cluster in clusters so first we would start with um, cluster one and to do that first we would actually read the image so we use io.imread and this is the path of where the image uh, is in the folder or on your desktop anywhere so when you download the file um, and the image make sure to change the path so that the code can run without any issues so now if not org then we print the image so not org is the negation of the org which means if it's true then we print the image and then we manually set org is equal to true so that we could uh, continue with all the compression so we uh, we print original image and then we show the image so if I run the code, uh, the first code would look like, like the first image, the original image would look like this. So we're using a panda image. Uh, so this is the original. So it prints original image and then shows the original image. Next, uh, we want to do the compression. So here we start printing uh, for k equals to cluster. So when we started the loop, our first cluster value is 1. So our first k value would be one in the clusters list. So for k equal to one, uh, and then we set the row um, with the dimension of the original image, and then we would be mutating the rows accordingly as we compress the image. So with the dimension of the original image, the row is uh, the original shape zero, and co column would be the original shape of one. And then we flatten the image. So we do image dot reshape uh, rows into columns uh, uh, with three. And now we try to implement k means clustering to form k clusters. So as I said before, you don't need to manually call uh, k means. I mean, you don't have to manually uh, write the k means algorithm just by importing the k means from uh, sklearn.cluster we can perform the k-means compression so now we call k-means on the cluster value so for uh, every cluster that's given so 1 5 10 for every loop that's run on the clusters list uh, we would perform k-means and then we would fit the image based on each cluster value okay now that we have fit the image uh, if you if you remember what algorithm we had discussed previously we um, assign like we initialize the centroid by uh, shuffling the data set and then randomly select k data points for the 
centroids. So for doing that, uh, we replace each pixel value with its nearby centroid. And we keep on doing this until the centroid values don't change. So to compress the image first, like we use k means dot cluster centers and k means dot label. So by this way, it will uh, keep on changing, checking the centroid, whichever is closest to it. Um, and it stops changing its centroid once it knows that uh, it cannot do any more further than that. So uh, it's stored in the compressed image variable here. And then we um, on compressed image, now we use the numpy.clip inbuilt function, wherein uh, the compressed image is passed with as type uh, u integer 8. So this is um, unidentified uh, uh, integer value of, uh, I mean, unsigned uh, integer of 8 bits. Uh, and this is basically used for graphics. That's why we use uh, u int 8. And then uh, numpy.clip has a low, uh, lower bound and an upper bound. So a lower bound is 0 and our upper bound is 255. We do this just so that we could compress the image uh, between this range. And then uh, we try to reshape the image to the original dimension. As you remember previously, we had flattened the image. The point of flattening the image is to uh, convert the image to a one dimensional uh, array such that we could perform some classification on that. But if we uh, just print out the compressed, if you just show the compressed image, it will just be a one dimensional array and we don't want that. We want to actually see what the image turns out to be. That's why we would reshape the image to the original dimension. We would give out the rows, we would give out the columns, and then we would give out the value three. And now um, this OS would save the directory as content that we have provided here, but it would not use, it's not using the panda one dot uh, image because we have compressed it and it's a different image. So it's just uh, saving the directory as slash content where the image like, needs to be saved. And now, yeah, we save it using uh, by printing panda compressed and with string cluster one dot jpg and now we want to show it so let's see how the compressed image looks with k equals to one so this was the original image and now k equals to one is just one color that we have and we see brown is in um, excess in this image so the closest centroid color that it received was brown that's why for k equals to one for one cluster um, it gets only the brown image now the same way we would uh, it re loops over the list and now the k value is equal to five and then um, it would do the same thing again it would print for k equals to five uh, set the dimension of original image it would flatten it uh, perform k means on it find the centroid compress the image um, and then reshape the image to the original image such that we can see what the image looks to be with k is equal to 5. And now let's see what the output looks like. With k is equal to 5, you can see the image uh, is not that clear as compared to what the original image is, but we're starting to get uh, some different, uh, we're starting to see the panda now uh, with some sort of background. So with k is equal to 5, um, it's a better image representation than with k is equal to 1, which was only one color. But with k is equal to 5, we're still getting the image of the panda, uh, if not the background. But we're at least able to figure out what different colors are present in the background. So we uh, now k is equal to 5, but if we go over the loop, our next k value is equal to 10, which would give uh, which would represent the image with better colors and more defined background. So we, we perform the same um, algorithm again uh, by setting the, uh, setting the dimension, flattening the image. So like the whole purpose of doing this uh, was that it starts compressing the image with the image that was last saved. So it compressed 
uh, so this was k is equal to one, one color. Now this k is equal to one image was saved and this image was used to perform k is equal to five, wherein we got some few more extra colors. And then uh, now, like that's the whole idea of this statement. It just saves the image. Uh, I mean, the io.im save and the directory such that it knows that this is the current image that needs to be compressed and not the original image. So yeah, now our cluster value, our k value is equal to 10. It performs the same algorithm. And then we can see here it is. So here is our k value. Uh, I mean, with k is equal to 10, what our image looks like, we can still start to see some background um, over here as compared to this, it was not very defined. We cannot figure out what the background is, but over here it's, there are sharper outlines and we can see what the background is supposed to look like. And now again, with a different k value, which is k is equal to 15, we see a better background with better colors um, and like much defined skyline, much defined uh, panda image. And now with k is equal to 25, you see the image much more clearly with all colors very visible, all the background very visible. And then 40 with k is equal to 45 and with k is equal to 65, uh, it's a almost near to perfect image. And then we again give k is equal to 85 to get an image which is the exact same image as what we had uh, given as an input, the original image. So if you see the original image as well as uh, k is equal to 85 image, it's nearly the same after compression. And this is what we wanted to see. So when you run the code, you would realize that with k is equal to 1, 5, 10, and even 15, the code uh, runs pretty quickly. We get to see the output pretty quickly. But once the k value increases, like it goes to 25, 45, 65, 85, it takes a lot of time to run. It takes about uh, 15 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes uh, to get an output. So you have to wait for really long to see what the image looks like. If you feel like there's something going wrong, it's not. Uh, this is how much time it would take to run because of a higher k value. There is much more compression that needs to be done, much more centroids to look at and a better um, image to be displayed. Hence, um, it takes a lot of time uh, in that way. So you can also take your own image. Uh, if not Panda, you can take a flower or any image of your choice and perform the k compression just to see how well your um, image gets compressed using k means. Um, so yeah, this is the end of the tutorial as well as the end of the first um, section of the MIST 101. Congrats on finishing five workshops with us. Um, we hope that you have uh, learned quite a lot with our videos and our tutorials. Uh, we would start our MIST 102, which is the higher level of MIST 101. Um, in January, wherein we would go in much greater detail with much advanced topics um, and some more tutorial for you to work on. Uh, so we really hope that you loved our workshop and there's a feedback form in the description. Make sure to fill that in so that we could improve ourselves by the next um, missed one or two. Thank you.